Today's a very special art history time machine because we are going to go back in time to visit one of my very favorite artists. That artist is named Vincent van Gogh. Now, Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch painter and he was born in the Netherlands around 1853. Now, that was 167 years ago, so that was way in the past in art history. And Vincent van Gogh started painting a little bit later in his life, around when he was 28 years old in 1881. Um, and for those of you who don't know where the Netherlands is, the Netherlands is a teeny tiny country in the western part of Europe in between Belgium and Germany. But when Vincent van Gogh started painting, he didn't stay in the Netherlands. He bounced around to England and France and then inevitably back to the Netherlands. And when he was painting, he started to develop this really unique style of painting where he used really bright colors and thick uh, dashes of uh, brush strokes of paint when he was painting. This style is called expressionism. Now expressionism means when an artist is trying to use color or a certain technique like his thick dashed line brush strokes to express some sort of emotion instead of making something look super realistic. Now Vincent van Gogh did a ton of paintings while he was alive, but he was never famous for the artwork that he was creating while he was alive. It was only until after he died that he started to get really well known for his paintings. In fact, there was only one painting that we know of that uh, somebody had bought from Vincent van Gogh. So poor Vincent van Gogh was doing all these different types of paintings from self-portraits. Self-portrait meaning when an artist creates an artwork of themselves. He did portraits and portrait meaning when an artist does a picture of someone else. He did still lives. A still life meaning when an artist does a picture of objects that are not alive. And also he did landscapes. Landscapes meaning an artwork of an outdoor scene in nature. And in fact, his probably his most famous painting that he ever did was a landscape painting called The Starry Night. Now, this very, very famous painting, I'm sure you've seen before, um, Vincent van Gogh painted this in 1889 when he was actually in a mental hospital in the south of France. Now this landscape was actually painted from the uh, window of where he was staying, looking out over a village. Now, we are gonna go and visit Vincent van Gogh. Now, I think it's a good idea to visit him while he was painting Starry Night. Do you think that's a good idea? All right, let's do it. Let me get the time machine. All right, here it is. Let me just punch in the date, 1889, so that we can go back in time to visit Vincent van Gogh while he was painting the Starry Night. Ready? 1889. Brace yourselves. Whoa! Whoa! someone call my name? Yes, I'm right here. I'm painting my beautiful landscape from my window and I'm going to call it a starry night. But I wonder if anyone should ever like it since no one seems to be buying my paintings. Do you like my paintings? If you like my starry night, you can even try to do your own landscape in my style. Miss Annie can show you how. Okay, when you're starting your Van Gogh landscape, you want to have certain materials uh, with you already. So you will need, obviously, a piece of 
blank paper. Uh, you're going to need some watercolors, or if watercolors are not available, you can also use the temper cakes. You're gonna want to have an array of different crayon colors that include yellows, greens, blues, and purples, but especially you're gonna need a black crayon. You're also gonna need some water and some watercolor brushes for your watercolor step, okay? So first things first, if you notice, we're gonna make our landscape horizontal. So you should have your piece of paper, not long and tall, but wide and fat. We would call this landscape orientation, okay? So once you have your uh, blank piece of paper, wide, landscape orientation, you're gonna find that black crayon. Now we're gonna first start off drawing all of our outlines in black, because remember Vincent van Gogh's uh, outlines, he had that very thick kind of dark outline. So we're gonna start at the bottom of our page. We're starting at the bottom of our page because in a landscape, the bottom of the page is considered to be the foreground. Foreground meaning it's what's closest to the viewer, okay? So let's start by drawing our foreground outline with our black crayon. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from one side of my page and I'm gonna start to curve down because it's a hill and I'm gonna maybe curve a little bit up and then curve down again, maybe curve a little bit up. There I have my foreground hills, okay? Now I'm gonna leave that blank. Um, but right above it, I'm gonna start making the middle ground hills. Now remember, when you are looking at a landscape, things that are further away from you start to appear looking smaller and smaller and smaller. So my foreground is going to be much thicker than my middle ground hills. So right above my foreground wavy line hills, I'm gonna take my black crayon again, just a little bit above, and I'm gonna start making the wavy lines for my middle ground hills. Now, because they're further up away from us, I can make those hills a little bit smaller. They don't have to go in the same direction as my foreground hills. Then I might do another layer of middle ground hills. Okay, so maybe I'll do another one right above. Maybe this time I don't start right at the uh, edge of the page. I might start right here above one of these hills. And again, curving up, curving down, does not have to go in the same direction as the lines below it. I'm gonna even put one more middle ground hill way in the distance. So I can start right above and again, wave down, up, doesn't have to go in the same direction like that. Whoa, look at all of these hills. Now, here comes the fun part. Now that we have our hills outlined, we get to start doing those fun, expressive dashes of um, all of our different colors. So I'm gonna start again at my foreground. Foreground, remember, is um, at the bottom. And because the foreground is closest to me, I might pick some lighter sort of grass colors since uh, it's closest to the viewer. So I might pick a yellow and a light green up to you. I'm gonna first start off with my yellow and as I am uh, uh, coloring in, I'm not coloring in how we normally color, which is filling in all the white space. I purposely want to leave some of the white space showing. Like v Vincent van Gogh would do, I'm gonna just do dash dash, 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 dash lines, kind of going in the same direction as the wavy lines in the hills. Don't just flick it. That's not gonna look uh, as precise. You wanna press down and do dash lines. Dash, 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 dash. Do we see here? Now you would fill all that space 
with those dashed lines of your one color, this color being yellow. But once I have enough of my hill filled in with those dashed lines of yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and find my second color to also put dashes in. My second color I've chosen is this light green. So kind of in between my yellow dashes, I'm gonna take my light green crayon and I'm gonna make the same type of dashes. Not flicks, but pressing down and purposely making dash, 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 dash lines. Going in the same direction as my uh, lines that outline my foreground hill. Okay, once you have that all filled in, you can go on to your middle ground hills. Now that's getting further away from us, so it's gonna start looking a little bit darker. So instead of using my yellow crayon, I might go for a darker green. So maybe my two colors that I'm gonna use are my dark green and my light green. I'll start off with the dark green first to really show that it's starting to get further away. So again, you're going to take that dark green crayon, not flick it, but you're just gonna dash, 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 dash. The more dashes you add, the better. So I'm gonna go in that same direction as my wavy lines kind of curving up, curving down. If you break a crayon, it's okay, it still works. But dash, 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 leaving some white space in between, okay? Now that you've dashed with your kind of darker green color, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some of that white space with my light green color that I used a little bit in my foreground. So in between, dash, 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 dash. In between my dark green, it's gonna fill with those dashes. Again, I'm not right now filling in a lot of dashes, but you guys can take more time to fill in with even more dashes. I'm kind of rushing so you can see what it's like. Already, woo, it looks like our uh, artwork is kind of moving. So great. Now for my uh, middle ground hill that's right above that, it's getting even darker. So I might pick, let's say, my dark green crayon and I might pick, what should I pick? Hmm. I'll pick this kind of dark blue, okay? So first one that I'm gonna do, let's do my dark green. So dash, 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 dash. Going kind of, remember, in the same direction as that outline waving up and down, curving up and down, leaving some white space in between so I can fit my second color. I'm pressing down hard, not flicking it. Pressing down hard so I really see those lines. Now I'm ready to uh, add my darker blue in between my dark greens for this uh, middle ground hill. So I'm staying in between the outlines so that this hill looks different from the one right below it. Oh, see, I <laughs> love to break crayons. Here we go. Okay, dash, 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 dash. In between my dark greens. There we go, I might add a little bit more. Already it's looking much different, further away. Now my last middle ground hill, hmm. I'm gonna use maybe, let's say, my purple and dark blue. Ooh. Actually, why don't I use either purple or dark blue, or also I could use my black, but mm, yeah, let's do purple and black. Make it a little bit different from my example. So I'm gonna start filling in this last middle ground hill with my purple dashes, dash, 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 leaving some space in between for my second color, but definitely pressing down hard so that we can really see those dashed lines kind of going in the same direction as your outline of your hill. Once I have it kind of filled in with that purple, I'm gonna take my black and fill in the dashes in between the purple dash lines. Dash, 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 dash. 
it's okay if you go over some of your lines, but we're trying to keep our dashed lines kind of in between um, our purple lines. So dash, 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 dash. Wow, already it's looking much darker and further away. Do we see that? Okay, now that I have my foreground done and I have my middle ground uh, hills done, the last part I have to do my dashes is my background. The background in the landscape is the part of the landscape that's so far away. It's usually where the sky is. In a landscape, the background is usually the sky. So I'm gonna try to pick some nice colors to fill in my sky background. So here I have a beautiful turquoise blue. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, but actually, you know what? Before I start doing the blue of my sky, Let's think about what's in a sky. You're right, we're gonna need a sun and some clouds, or if you are doing a starry night, instead of a sun, you would need a moon and you would need some stars. So it's kind of up to you if you want to do a scene landscape during the day using a sun and lighter blue for the sky, or a, a starry night where you can use, um, you know, the same sort of yellow for the moon, but maybe sort of darker colors for the, the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and, hmm, I'm gonna make this a starry night. Why not? So here I'm gonna um, add uh, my moon. So for my moon, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my orange crayon to draw a curved line, okay, like a backwards letter C. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go back around and make another curved line connected. Do we see that? Another backwards C that connects at both points. Then I can go ahead and I'm gonna use that orange line, dash, 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 dash for my moon. But my moon is even emitting some light. So I'm gonna take my a uh, yellow crayon and around my moon, I'm gonna make dash, 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 kind of going around and around and around because that moon is emitting some light from it. There we go. So here I have my moon and the light around it. I might also wanna make some of those clouds, those kind of moving, wavy clouds. So for my clouds, I'm gonna pick maybe a dark and a light blue to do. So for the clouds, remember it's gonna go kind of whirly. I don't need to outline in black. I can just take my dark blue crayon and go dash, 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 dash in kind of a curved line. Then I'm gonna uh, create more of those dashed lines going in the same direction as my wavy dashed line. Dash, 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 dash. Maybe another layer. Dash, 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 dash. Ooh, look at my wind. All right, then I guess I will pick my turquoise to fill in. So I'm gonna fill in in between uh, the dark blue with my turquoise. Dash, 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 going in the same direction. Waving up, waving down, waving up, waving down. Dash, 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 in between. Beautiful. But I'm also missing some of my stars. So I can go ahead, I can use my yellow crayon. I can make little dots where I want my stars. Maybe right there. Now I can go ahead and I can, instead of yellow, just yellow, I can also use some of my orange, dash, 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 around my stars. Dash, dash, dash. So I have that. And then as the outer layer of my, of my stars, I can use some of my yellow too, because those stars are really bright in the sky. Dash, 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 dash. Remember, you do not have to do uh, your landscape at night. You can do it during the day if you would like to. Um, but since I'm doing it at night, my background, I'm gonna use 
black to do my dashes for this guy. So all around my wind and my moon and my stars, I'm gonna then take my black crayon because it's at night and fill in the dashes going around the wind, avoiding the stars, dash, 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 just filling in that white space in between the wind, the stars, and the moon. Dash, 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 dash. Notice, I still have some white space in between my dashes, that's okay, but I'm still trying to keep my dashes close enough together where it still seems a little bit filled in. So dash, 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 dash. Now that I have most of my dashes filled in, we get to do the super fun part and now watercolor it. So you can put your crayons aside, okay? Get out your watercolor, make sure you have some water and watercolor brushes. If you wanna use the temper cakes, if that's available, that's fine too. So towards our foreground, the bottom of our page, the bottom of our landscape, remember we used lighter colors. So am I going to put a blue at the foreground? No, I'm gonna look for a lighter color, kind of like a lighter green. And if I look at my watercolor set, I notice I have a really nice light green here. And in my temper cake set, I have a really nice light green here. So I can take my pick. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use the regular watercolor. So the first thing I need to do is I gotta get my watercolor brush out. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you use, up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the water because my poor little watercolor set is super, super thirsty and it can't activate its powers until it gets a drink. I'm so thirsty. I know you are. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Now I have my water in here. Maybe I'll give it more to drink because it really likes it. Oh, and I've activated its powers. I can tell I activated its powers because when I look at my paintbrush, I can see the color already on the bristles of my paintbrush. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush with that light green. I'm gonna to go to my foreground. Ooh! And I'm going to spread my watercolor uh, light green all across underneath that uh, top line of my foreground hill. I'm not going above it, I'm keeping this color at the bottom. So underneath that wavy line, I'm gonna give it some more. Ooh! Notice how the crayon is pushing away the watercolor. That's because uh, the oil of the crayon does not like the water and it pushes it away because it's so oily. Oil and water do not mix and that's why it's happening. So now I have the uh, bottom kind of filled in, but I wanna switch colors. So what do I need to do to my brush? You're right, I gotta wash it out. So I'm gonna put it in my water. I'm gonna press up, down, up, down, up, down. Make sure that the light green is off my brush. And since it's getting further away, do I need to make my next layer lighter or darker? You're right, darker. So I'm going to look for a darker green in my watercolor set. Good thing it's right above my light green. I'm gonna activate my dark green by giving my dark green some, some water. Ooh. And now I'm going to fill in this next layer. I'm not gonna go above that, uh, that line. I'm gonna stay in between these two wavy lines. So again, I'm gonna spread my color. Woo! Beautiful, filling in all the white space. If you notice that your color is too light, that means you need more watercolor. So you can uh, get some more watercolor. If you notice your color is too dark, that means you need more water. So you can add more water to your brush and spread it. So I'm gonna stay in between those two lines. Spread, 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 spread. Beautiful. Next, I'm going on to my next middle ground hill. And again, I gotta wash out my brush because I'm gonna switch colors. 
And this time, I'm looking at my watercolor set and it looks like there's an even darker green, which I think is kind of like a bluish green. That's gonna look really, really nice for that next layer. So again, I activate my watercolor. Ooh, I'm gonna fill in that next layer, layer trying to stay in between those two lines. Gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. If you see that there are some little pools of water on your watercolor, you don't wanna have those pools of water just sit there because it might rip your page. So you can take your paintbrush and spread out those kind of pools of uh, water so that it, it doesn't just sit there. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to my next layer. So when I gotta do my brush, I gotta wash it out. Once I have that washed out, I can then pick an even darker color. Now this time, I have a bunch to choose from. There are some dark blues, there are some purples. Since my hill was kind of purpley, I might go wild and do, hmm, let's say I'm gonna do a purple for my hill. Now you get to pick um, a different color. If you would like to pick a different color, I'm just gonna go with purple because I think it'll look pretty. Ooh, and I was right. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead trying to stay in those lines, just coloring that, or painting that last hill. Beautiful, spreading out my pools of water so it doesn't just sit there, and gorgeous. If you accidentally uh, get some of your color into another hill, is that a big deal? No, not a big deal, it's okay. Our goal is to try to keep them separate, but if they kind of run into another, that's okay. You're gonna, again, wash out your brush because the last part that we have to paint is our background. And remember, our background is that beautiful night sky, or if you did a day sky, it's going to be different. If you did a day sky, the best color to kind of fill it in is a lighter blue because during the day, the sky is light blue. So you would pick a nice light blue to fill in. But this time, because I did a night sky, I get to pick a dark blue to fill it in. So I'm gonna look, oh, I see a beautiful dark blue here. I'm gonna activate my color, dark blue, and I'm gonna spread, 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 spread. Gorgeous. If I wanna make it darker, remember, don't add more water. If you wanna make it darker, you gotta add more of the watercolor. If you want it lighter, you do add water. So I'm gonna spread, 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 spread. That's pretty, but you know what? I might wanna make it a little bit darker because I'm noticing this dark blue might look kind of similar to my day sky. So if you would like to, you can put a layer of an even darker color on top of your night sky. My darker color uh, might be this black, or actually it's purple, that's fine too. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread, spread, spread if I want a layer of a different color on top of my blue, totally fine. You can totally mix colors in watercolor. Beautiful. <gasps> and there I have my lovely night sky Van Gogh inspired landscape. Now that you've made your own Vincent Van Gogh landscape painting, I think it's about time we head back into the time machine to get back to the present. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself.